please work. Oh. Not a thing? Okay. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Oh, hey, 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 whoa, you said nothing. Oh, we got something. Look at that. Oh, hello from Cali. Let's go through the ads real quick. Teespring slash store slash five star. Yay. Patreon. Car five star car stereo. Holy moly, look at that. What? We got so many people already. I'm just waiting for it to catch up. Exactly. Um, Remember the last time? It looked like that again. What's up, buddies? What's up? What's up? Hello, hello. Saludos, bro. Saludos, Luis. Say. There we go. Hello, California. What's up? What's up? So, you can find the podcast here. There will be a new podcast up. Uh, it's I just I uploaded it. I haven't made it go live yet, so it will be this weekend. You're getting a new podcast What's this weekend. What's up? Alaska. Both, both video and the other one. Brooklyn. Ohio. What do we got here? Oh, stickers. Don't forget the stickers. That's still going on. If you guys want free stickers. Yeah. Stickers, get free stickers. Give Sue something to do, cause like, you know, she doesn't have anything else to do. And of course, Dean has really? children. I was joking. She work. Yeah, she works like a dog. Tallahassee. All right, let's, what's going let's, on, Indiana? All right, let's just cut to it. All right, guys, and welcome to the Saturday show. Whoa, right I know. I'm sorry. How is everyone doing this weekend? What's Woo! going on? Uh, the 9906 XR vid hopefully will be next week. Travis. Um. <laughs> I was going to do it this week, but because we had the Thursday show, Tennessee. which on Facebook was amazing, and on YouTube, whatever. Um, so we had a great time. It's Saturday. I know, right? <sighs> Go figure. Anyways, what was that? Uh, what was the 3X05 brain that was in the live mm, video yeah. from Directed Fry? 3X05. 3X05. Was it, was it this one? It wasn't this one, no. was it? No, that was the 410X. Um, uh, was there a 3X05? Mm -hmm. Or was, oh, that was the small one. Yeah, 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 that, yeah. We don't have that one. No, he took it. That was a prototype. That was a, yeah, that so was that's the that. new entry level prototype. And he, he didn't leave us one of those. He was like, whoa, I almost forgot that. Yeah, I got one. Um, but no, that was the new prototype that, that they showed you guys. So <coughs> even though everyone was like, oh man, oh, directed this, that, and the other. We'll uh, check, we checked CDT, CDT yeah. audio. <sighs> so, anyways, here. we are here. We're fun. It is back to DSP. Last weekend, it, we, we started DSP with the kicker. Raul. And then we had to take a week off because you went to Orlando and, and had fun there. And then... Not really. I know. The kid got sick. Uh, and then came back. Yeah. So we're back to DSP. Hey, I have it. Let's see. I have it. And the sub side won't do anything. What do I need to do? An LOC, LC. I'm, I'm assuming you're talking about the audio control. Make sure that you have the appropriate jumpers. There's jumpers inside of an LC7i. Um, make sure you have the right if ones. If you have the owner's manual, uh, they tell you right there. Yeah, so make sure. And, mm -hmm. and there again, DS4 has Bluetooth. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes, it does. And it's quite cool. Um, Some version for dummy. How do you run an RCA to, to the dip? Huh? What's the dip? Well, like what kind of dip? What kind of dip what, do you want to what, run into? What are we talking about? Hello from Columbus, Ohio. Uh, Pioneer or Alpine Radio? Uh, totally Kenwood. different. No. <laughs> <laughs> totally um, different, thanks. This is nudes. Uh, so like, I'm from okay. Norway. So if you're comparing the new W650 okay. Okay, against the new Pioneer compatible price, okay. which one are you going with? So that'd be like a 15 something? Yeah. Like the one we did today? Mm hmm MVA, DMR, whatever the heck it's called, 1500. Which one would you go with? I'm going with the W650. Yes, yes. I like the W650. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I agree. I, I think the W650 <coughs> at its price point, pretty hot yeah. radio. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, there you go. Uh, Bobby's in the What's house. What's going on, Bobby? And Ronnie. Like, Disney, you suck. Audio control is in the house. <laughs> Look love. what we have in the All background. Right, so back to what I was saying. We have the, uh, hey, what's up? Pacific Northwest. Um, <laughs> audio control. So we have the DSP set up. Now, right now, there's four products that have the DSP built into them. So we're going to talk about those throughout the show. And we're going to go through the software, just like we did with the kicker, so that we can 
get you guys more acquainted with how the software works and what products it has available to it. Right off the bat, there is two DSPs that we talk about all the time, which is the DM608 and the DM810. Now, the name is what basically tells you what it does. It's a six channel input and eight channel output. This is an eight channel input, 10 channel output. And those inputs can either be high level or line level through the RCAs. So you can go either way. Now they both have, that's what these, these are the inputs for high level. And if you'll notice on this, it has four. Yeah, right here. So you can choose what you want. Now there again, the six is, the six to eight is very popular because most of the time you just need six outputs or eight outputs. Mm -hmm. However, in a growing number of systems, you want those extras, so the 10 is cool. Now there are two amplifiers that have the DSP built into it. You have the guy, the D4.800, the one we talk about a lot because this is one of my favorite amplifiers. And then you have its big brother, the D61200. Mm -hmm. Now what this has built into it is a six channel input, even though it's a four channel amplifier, because what it allows you to do is it allows you to bring two inputs here, um, yeah, they're right, here, yeah, I two inputs Probably. into channel one. Yeah. So for example, if you're doing a car that has a tweeter output from the factory radio or amplifier and a mm -hmm. mid-range output from the radio or factory amplifier, you can bring both of those in. You can also bring your door chimes in, you can do whatever you want. And there's a level control in the software for that. Mm -hmm. This has that same feature also. Now, so you get your four RCA inputs because obviously you're not gonna need that type of an input for RCA mm -hmm. and you get two RCA's output. So that what that allows you to do is the DSP inside is a six channel DSP, which we'll show you here in a minute. And then this is the 61200. This has eight channels of input. It has that same input for the front that that does along with the other uh, three, four, five, six, seven, eight inputs, mm -hmm. and it also has a RC output. So you get six RC inputs, one RC outputs. Put, not puts. Put. Puts. puts. Um, so these are the DSP amplifiers. Now, what you would do with that output is go off to your sub amplifier if you wanted to, like the 1.1500 or the 1.800. As I like to call it, my most favorite five channel amplifier is the D4.800 and a LC 1.800. Now, that input that we talked about is also available on the LC amplifier. So they have these two amplifiers available in the LC, and what they're missing is the D, which is the DSP. So you could still do those style inputs if you're not <laughs> wanting to do DSP. All right, so question. Yes. Question for you. Uh, how do you run two mids of one RCA so you can have more speakers uh, from the inactive? So, okay, so really, your RCA is just your signal path for what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Really what you need is channels on the amplifier. So you need more channels. If you wanted to take this six channel amplifier and you wanted to go tweeter, mid, mid, and then out to something else, you can, it really doesn't matter. But let's say, okay, so let's say you have a tweeter and then you have a mid-range, mid-range, and a mid-base. You're not, we're not gonna get into DSP, but you wanna run a bunch of, or you have them in different locations. So you have like a mid up top in the dash and mid in the door. You need amplifiers for each one of those channels in order to control the level of them. So like this one, let's say it's facing like this, and this one's down here. You may wanna turn this one down and turn this one up. You can Y jack done. those RCAs off if they're both playing the same frequencies. You just can't do time alignment because you would have to have an individual channel of time alignment. So if you just have front rear sub output, time alignment's off the table, unless you go to like an 810 DSP. But uh -huh. if you just want to do this and adjust those, so like in a Dodge Ram, you have a three and a half in the dash, you have a six by nine in the door. If you ran those both on channel one, which you can, you're not off of a two channel amplifier, you're not gonna have level control. So if this one seems really high because at the factory, if this is actually like an eight ohm speaker and this is a four ohm speaker and they do that to bring this one down, but you're putting a four ohm speaker in it and a four ohm speaker, this one is all of a sudden gonna get exponentially louder. If you put it on its own channel, but still run front RCA into it, you can tone, you can gain it down. This is that gain overlap thing we're talking about all the time. Mm -hmm. You can gain this one down. So if you set your maximum gain level on both, and then you go ahead and turn this one down, then you can control that output better. Hope that kind of answers that question. Uh, I have 19 speakers in my charger from the factory. Yes, you do. 
which means you have one of the premium sound systems. So at that point, you don't even care how many speakers you have because most of those are just like silly speakers in all different locations. It sounds great, I'm sure. But if you had an Amp Pro, then you could just and, and go to a DSP or an AR into a DSR1 or something like that, or into a Forza or into an audio control. That's what the expansion port is for. Then you can put whatever speakers you want in there and however many you want. Okay, so <laughs> let's take a look at the software real quick. I'm gonna zoom in so you guys can see it a yep. little bit better. We'll zoom in here. So you have three different settings on the software. You have your input view, your output view, and your dashboard view. Right now we're on the input viewer, and what we have is channels one and two, three and four, and we're looking at a DM810. So if we want, if and you can download this software, it's Windows, Mac, or iPad. So let's pick the 4.800, yes, because that is a definite popular setting. There's no glare, it's okay. all good. So now we have front rear and front high this is that one input we were talking about that is whatever you want it to and so you can come over here you can name the channel front or you can call it mid you can call it whatever you want and then you tap on this one and you can call it rear so you can go ahead and name and then if you're not using this you can go ahead and name it none just so you feel better about yourself and now what we have is, this is the input view. Now, if you were playing sound right now, this is a full input RCA, RTA. So this would be giving you the whole graphics of sound coming into it. And then this is your gain control right here. This is what's gonna control the gain of the amplifier. So if you're at your zero dB setting, um, this is zero dB. So now as you're going in and you're playing, uh, when you're doing your gain matching, this is where you're going to do it, is right here. This is your clip light indicator. So as you're playing your, test tones you can zoom up in here so if you play a thousand hertz test tone into this you can gain adjust it to zero db or if you're going to do like a negative five you can go ahead and turn that up but this is where that's done and it's done for each channel so after you do front you have to switch to rear okay and there again you can see the rta moving the whole time now we'll go to the output view this is where you're going to spend majority of your time okay now the input view is located right here okay and you'll see where it says output summing so if you want to do summing it's done in this pane we'll go ahead and we don't want to do summing for channels one and two we just want it to be channels one and two but let's come over here to the line out which is the subwoofer output so if we want that to be a summed input so when we fade between front and rear we can go ahead and select front and rear and that's what's going to feed this it's going to sum those two channels now if we come over here and we'll switch this to a DM810, so let's say we have to do a lot of summing. Now you'll see here we have all these channels. Now channels 9 and 10 are solo channels, which means if you want a channel 9 to be a center channel and you want a channel 10 to be a subwoofer channel, you could do that because when you select them, they're individual channels. Okay, they, they do whatever they want. Now you can use the summing here to sum them. So let's say channels one and two is front uh, front tweeter, channels three and four is front mid, and you want to feed that into channel nine, which is a center channel. So you come over here and you select this, you select this, turn these off. And now what that's going to do is this channel, channel nine, which is your center, is going to be fed by those two. Let's say channel 10 is your subwoofer, and you're only using channels three and four is where your sub base is at for this example. So then you just select three and four. Now five and six input over here, you'll notice these are singles. So what that means is let's say you have a door chime or a backup sensor or something like that that you need to add in, you can add those in on those <laughs> channels. Or if you have a center channel output, you can go ahead and add those in. So one and two could be front tweeter, three and four could be front mid, five could be center channel, six could be subwoofer, and seven and eight could be rear fill. That's why they allow you to name those so you can kind of keep track of what's going on in the actual setup. And then you can use this to do all your summing and then you have an output level control here. So this, this is where your input view was your input level. This is gonna be your output level. So if you set that to clipping, but now you wanna go in and you wanna do your gain overlap, you wanna turn signals down, turn them up, you can. And we'll come over here to channels three and four. Now, one thing to note, is over here in the settings. This is important anytime you're using an audio control processor. So it says three, three plus four, four, or it's gonna say any any one of the, no. 
um, it's gonna say yes. Okay, we'll select that. So it doesn't matter. Any one of these channels that has a dual number situation going on, it's gonna look like that. So if we come over here to five, six, it's gonna look like that. Now if I tap on five, you'll notice right here, that'll automatically split those channels. What this gives us the ability to do is now we have delay, left and right delay, which we've had before, but now we have left and right volume control, okay? So what that means is let's say that tweeter, that mid-range, that mid-bass on the driver's side is coming in really hot. They're like, oh my gosh, I can come over here and I can grab that tweeter, I can turn that down. If I wanna just turn the passenger tweeter down a little bit, I can do that now, okay? And I can also EQ them by themselves. So if I wanna come down here, just scroll up. Let's grab the sign here, we'll scroll up. Now if I wanna do an EQ setting, for just the tweeter on the driver's side, you just grab these guys. And actually, you can just come over here to your, you can use the trackpad, your arrows, and just move up, move down. And then if I come over to six, I'll select six, now there's nothing there. So you can EQ left, EQ right. Or if you wanna do a full pre-EQ, leave it like this, because what it's gonna do, it's gonna sum them back together. So now if I, sum, I click this, it summed them back together, so five and six are now this. So if I do a pre-EQ, where I EQ just the whole system or that whole channel, then I can come and separate them apart and do another EQ at that point. I can make them unique just to those settings. All right, let's take a break and answer some questions. Let's zoom back out here. You know, I can't go bug anymore. That's okay. Yeah. Yeah. What's up, car gift? All right, so that's the first part that's, that gets us going on that. No, it is not a parametric EQ, it is a graphic EQ. So far, uh, the two DSPs we've had up are graphic EQs. Now, if you've seen the DM810 that we have up, you'll notice the software on the DM810 looks a lot like this because those, this software is what allowed the DM810 to exist. Yeah. Uh, it's a graphic EQ, so basically that, what that means for you guys is it's 31 bands. You can pick a frequency and you can go up on that frequency. Let me click on a frequency here. So I can pick, let's say this, I can go up. If I take my arrow, I can go over, I can go down. Remember, gain down, always gain down on the EQ. Okay, so actually now that you say gain down on the EQ, uh, Darren actually asked a good question. What's the difference between uh, turning down using the gain versus uh, turning down, dropping the dBs? It's a great question. So what you want to do is set your gain appropriately, meaning get your, so get the gain output right, okay? So if you have, if you've gone in and you've set up your gain to where it's it's maximized to its most potential, that's as loud as that system ever needs to play, okay? You don't need to go any higher. So if you set it to negative five dBs of overlap, you're, you're topped off. You don't need to go any louder. So now at this point, you want to go down, okay? You want to gain down those frequencies that are playing really high so because they're overboard so you want to bring those down okay so like, let's look at this right here that's 6 dBs of gain so now if I've set my system for negative 5 dBs of overlap that's going to give me 11 dBs of gain on that frequency depending on what's coming out of it from the whatever the speaker's doing so you can really overdrive those speakers. Now, if you set your system up as a zero dB gain system, well, yeah, sure, you can gain up, but nobody ever does that because it's, it doesn't sound good. Um, so, does that make sense? I hope. Okay, mister. Yeah, I know. Exactly, that was, that was okay, my... I was like, hey, what's up, <laughs> Jason? I was, oh my God, uh, uh, so, you know. Parts Express DSP, yes, we will do the full review. We're gonna have one of these yeah. for that, don't worry. I, I know we haven't done an unboxing of, of that, but we are gonna, we're gonna put that up here and yeah. we're gonna show you that for sure. There's no okay. doubt about it. I think the DMA 10, it's all software, no knobs. Correct. No, yeah, it's not there's, knobs. There's no knobs on any of these. No. Okay, there's none. And even when you get into all the DSP stuff, there it's are the no, same there's thing. no gains. No, there's no knobs. There's no knobs whatsoever. No, no. Everything is done by the, uh, by the, by the software. The LCs yeah. have, the LC yeah. amps will have those. Now, if you want to use this software via Bluetooth, you do have to buy Thank you, thank you, buddy. Hold on, let me grab that real yeah. quick. Yeah. Okay, uh, for the, actually, the guy, he asked about the, uh, the JL, VXI, we, this we don't is, have nothing for that, man. This like, is the Bluetooth dongle. Um, if you plug that into the expansion port on the DM810, the DM608, yeah. 
and the D61200. Yep. Those all, pardon me, those all have the expansion ports. Mm -hmm. The D4.800 does not. Yeah. That expansion um, port can also be used for your uh, AR input from iData. Uh, so, like I say, for the JL, JL amplifiers, they seem like pretty nice amplifiers, like really good amplifiers. We're That's not, not to dealer. say we're not going to do this with the JL yet. It's just we're it, it's going to be later on because we want to get through the ones that we do know uh -huh. and then have us time to play with those to, to figure them out. Because here's the deal. One of the goals of showing you guys this is so that you understand that most DSPs all do basically the same thing mm -hmm. and what separates them apart other than parametric and graphic are little tiny features such as that and the software mm -hmm. okay this is one of the easiest <laughs> softwares you'll ever see being used next to like a DSR1 on an iPad uh, but this is one of the most this is one of the simplest DSP softwares there is um, where there was a question. Oh, yes. Have we ever done the uh, D61200 as a standalone amplifier? Yes, all the time, actually. We actually use this more as a five channel amplifier um, than we do anything else. So we will use this to power front, rear, and then go to a single sub because for the single sub side, it's like four, 450, something like that. Uh, it's plenty of a power for yeah. a small system that's designed around that. Um, we've done systems, we've done an F-150 where we actually started out with this doing that. We had it on two Comp R10s and we did front stage, rear stage, and then the customer wanted to go crazy. Yeah. And so we then took this and we went uh, bridged, turned this into a four channel amp because we had, what did we have on it? We had um, Focal Flax. Focal Flax. So we took this and bridged this to Focal Flax component up front. Channels one and two is bridged to the Focal drivers. Three and four is bridged to the Focal passenger. And then, because he just wanted more power, he wanted it super loud. Mm -hmm. So this was a four channel amp instead of going to active because we weren't going for, oh yeah, that's, he wanted it in your face. Yeah. So then we went with a Fox box and we put the uh, LC 1.800 mm -hmm. onto that. And there is a picture of that on Instagram where the, the 61200 and the um, What's that, Johnny? And the uh, 1800 are right next to each other, big zero gauge. Uh, it turned out really neat. But he just, he was like, I like it, it's cool, I want to go stupid. And we're like, well, you can do that. So, ah, oh, loud and clear. Hey, okay. what's up? Uh, right here. Uh, uh, sound quality difference between an ACM and an LC amp, in your opinion. Ooh, is there one? I mean, you've been running the ACMs in your car now yeah, for almost yeah, a year. Yeah. And you've yeah. had, we've taken amplifiers in and in, out. In and out, in and out. And, and, and I still go back and put the ACM. Um, the one thing about the ACM that I will say is that, you know, I think it's one of those really overlooked amplifiers because like when we tested the Lumi, yeah. this is a 50 watt by four amplifier at four Correct. ohm. Yes. It'll put out 70 watts, 74 watts, uh -huh. something like that. We were yeah. getting out of it at four ohms. 75. All yeah. day long. Yeah. Okay. All day long. <laughs> it's got tons of power. This is just a little four channel, 75 by four. Mm -hmm. The features that it has is extremely cool. So sound wise, one of the things to keep in mind about audio control that is that all these amplifiers are two ohm stable amplifiers, mm -hmm. but they're not two ohm stable. I should say they're two ohm manufactured amplifiers. So all these were originally designed to play at two ohm. If you can play at two ohm, obviously you can play at four ohm, but just because you can play at four ohm and it's rated for two ohm, does that mean that your amplifier is gonna actually work all that well on a two ohm load? Most amplifiers kind of fall apart when it's class D added to them load. You know, there's some amplifiers you say, I'm gonna run it to them. I'm like, no, 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 you're not. Um, you're not gonna do that on a class D yeah. amplifier because it just sounds like crap. It just, the amplifier falls apart. Some of the best amplifiers we have that are class D amplifiers that are highs, and we won't get into that AB versus D debate, that's not where we're going with this, is that they just fall apart. They, they just don't like it. These were designed to play it to them. So yeah. they'll do it all day long. Like oh, we yeah. can take a set of, we, we put K2s on these oh, and it's awesome. like. Full power. Damn. Yeah. You know, yeah. they eat it up all day long and they sound like K2s. There's none of that. Oh crap, it's at two ohms. <laughs> no, there's none of that. So it's like, uh, Focal Flax can take, take. all that power. Yeah. Fo okay. So you gotta remember, um, power ratings and what a speaker can take a lot of it is BS, all right? Because there's not a lot of understanding of what a speaker 
can handle, at what frequency range, at what crossover point. Like, we won't even get into my, my, my grievance with the 200 watt tweeter. Okay, you show me a 200 watt tweeter that isn't the size of a nuclear warhead, and I'm gonna call poo poo. You're welcome, Jason. Um, so, um, yes, it can take that power all day long uh, and just just manhandle the, the crap out of it. I mean, when we got done with that car, we were like, oh, 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 oh my God. You know, because those flax were just stupid loud, man, and they sounded great. Speakers love <laughs> power. Oh, yeah. Oh, they yeah. love power, but they also like to be treated nice. Yeah. So that's where that fine line comes in. Mm -hmm. Most people that blow speakers are doing one of two things. Their amplifier is too small, and they're gaining it up, which is causing clip and distortion. They don't have the crossover set properly, or they have an EQ, and they're running it to where it's all just... Let's go over here to draw. And let's draw this. Yay! Or no, yeah. Let's do this. Uh, Yay. All right, let's They're see. doing this. Okay. That's 12 dBs of boost at that frequency. That's 6 dBs of boost at that frequency. So for those of you guys that know 3 dB, every 3 dB gets twice as loud, and nice. it's not, but it does kind of gets louder. That's trying to put out double the power. You're gonna blow everything you put in it. Okay. I blew some six and a half across the low. <clears throat> That's possible yeah, to do. Yeah. Years ago, we made a video where we talked about cross high high frequency crossover points on six and a half, and it's it's a really it's it's in a from the install bay playlist. Um, and what we do is we take like a big magnet, deep six and a half, and we compare it to a six and a half that's a shallow six and a half. Like, so I think we took like a Rockford and maybe a Pioneer or a JVC. Yeah. And we compared the two showing the movement of the driver with the crossover points and how power can increase. That's how it will. You know, because the, the thing was is like, this speaker was rated for 50 watts. This speaker was rated for 100 watts. You can put 100 watts at this and play it at 50 hertz all day long and it sounds great. You could put 100 watts to this one and if you cross it over at 220, it will sound great and it'll play. It just won't play mid bass because you have to limit that cone's movement so that you're not blowing the crap out of it. Now, you still have the heat factor that's involved, but if it's properly crossed over and EQ'd, you're okay. Okay. All right. Uh, good evening. Good evening. What do you got? Uh, you raise what? You raise a, uh, you raise a great point on power. power. I want to buy amp my Precision Power 3.56 CSs. Would my tweeter be sweet with 100 watts RMS from my JL HD amps? So, Yes, more than likely it will because you will never that tweeter will never see that hundred watts. Okay, if you ever look at like, if you go to Audio Frog, okay, and go to Andy's page on Audio Frog, and you go to the, the there's a whole text section in there, and one of those things you'll see is where he talks about uh, crossovers and volume and what actually a tweeter will see. Most tweeters with a hundred watts on them actually only see about five watts because that's all that's happening by the time those signals get there and the roll off of the music and everything. They see about five watts. I mean, think about this for a minute. If you have a subwoofer, hold on. Uh, yeah. And of course, I only have the heaviest subwoofer there is to show. So let's look at this subwoofer right here. This is a, what, thousand watt yeah. subwoofer. Look at those tinsel leads, all right? These are huge tinsel leads. Now, I'm sure you guys have woofers, and you've looked at those tinsel leads, and you'll say, oh, that's like an 800 watt tinsel lead, mm -hmm. all right? Better yet, take a look at a mid-range. A mid-range tinsel lead on it almost looks like that subwoofer tinsel lead, and they're only rated for 90 watts. Now look at a tweeter. You can't even see the tinsel leads on a tweeter. It looks, it's like you can't even floss your teeth with them. And somehow that's gonna handle 100 watts? Hmm, maybe. Maybe not. That's not because it's never going to get there. That those frequencies will never be there. So, yeah. <laughs> cool. Um, if you ever run Active before, what are my chances, chances of successfully learning to use the software? There again, there is a ton of information out there on the internet to right now, get yep. your crossover points. Mm -hmm. um, if you can get the FS of the speaker, then you can figure out the appropriate crossover point for that speaker. Once you know the appropriate crossover point, this is not that bad. You can also download apps to your phones that have RTAs in it. You can get something like the Audio Control iTest mic. Grab the iTest mm -hmm. mic. Um, if you have an iDevice of some kind, it's like 150 bucks, okay? And they come with this. 
comes with a cool case. This is the eye test mic. You guys have seen us use this in the video. We hook it up to an iPad. It doesn't okay. come like that. No, we added the braiding <laughs> so he can tell his from mine. Um, with this RTA, or your phone for that matter, you can get extremely close to what is going on. So you go here, you download this application. Hang it's on. made by Studio 6. Yeah. Yeah, anyway. Is it going to crash? It's going to crash. Um, hold on, I'll grab my iPad. I have it right here. Um, anyway, just go to uh, your Google Play, your Apple. Apple no, uh, it's only on Apple. Remember, it's only it's on device. Apple, that's true. Uh, yep, device. my bad. Yep, okay, so... Goes. No, right there. Audio control. There it is. So this is the Studio 6 software right here. Uh, JL licensed this software for a while too, so you JL guys might recognize this software. Um, go ahead and put it in there. Plug it on. Right All right, here. there you go. Those are the cool little lines. So you can adjust your range simply by touching up and down. So with this, there again, this is a 31 band. So if you're matching that up to your EQ, which is 31 bands. Put your microphone. For the most part, believe it or not, and this is why this is why a lot of guys like pair like, like graphic EQs as to parametric EQs. It's you just you just line it up and you say, I got a problem right here, you turn it up, you turn it down. That's it. You just line them up. And a lot of people love that because when you're first learning DSP or EQ, this makes it super simple. When you run against the wall, meaning like you're like, I need those frequencies between that, that's where my problem is. That's when the parametric EQ becomes very helpful. But for, like I said, this is one of the easiest softwares to use. Now, the nice thing about this software, mm -hmm. we'll, we'll zoom over here to page three real quick. Well, I said you, you're not gonna spend a lot of time, but it's really cool and I wanna point it out. We'll go to dashboard view here. Okay, hang on. Uh, Larry, you can try 80, 80 hertz. For a basic crossover point? Uh, yeah, uh, for the Kenwood Excellence, yeah. uh, seven inch. I mean, you're gonna start at 80 and see where it works out at, but uh -huh. then you're probably gonna go a little bit lower, maybe in the 60 or 70 range. Uh, if you can go 18 dB or 24 dB on that crossover, you can get the crossover point a lot lower and get more mid bass on it. So what we're looking at here is the dashboard view. This is nice to check out once you're done with the output view. You can kind of get an overview of everything. So what you have is your input RTA here. So this is gonna look just like this is going to look just like this. This is going to have that going on. So you can see if you're doing this high level, you're going to be able to see what's coming out of that channel that you've connected to right here. It's going to look cool. And then your output RTA. Now this is going to tell you what the EQ has done to that signal coming out of it. Okay. Not that you're going to see the speaker. So there's three RTAs that you need for a system. You need an input RTA, so you can see what signal's getting fed into the DSP. You need an output RTA, so you can see what the crossover, I'm sorry, what the EQ and crossover have done to that signal. And then you need the audio formed RTA with the microphone, because with this, you can then go back in and tweak this to make this look in your car like it's supposed to. So they give you two of the three RTAs that you need in order to set up your car. Um, should I write, should I rewire the speaker wires after I install a new speaker? No, no, um, you're, no you're, it's, you're fine. We use the factory wiring in that truck all the time. Okay, I wanna say uh, real quick, uh, Jack Daniels, thank you so much. Uh, I'm assuming he drive uh, from whatever he was to, to, the, to the install bay. Uh, I think, uh, let me see. Did he stop by? Yeah, uh, Kellen? Kellen, uh, he said he wanna do like a three-way set SQ and okay. everything, and he lives in Atlanta. So yeah, you can come over here. Just contact and, uh, Paul. Contact call Paul. The store, set set it all up. And see uh, what do you want? What are you looking for? You can talk to Dean, and um, you guys can set it up everything. Yeah. You know, you can go to the beach over here. I it's have really a Toyota nice. Tundra. Oh, perfect. You have a Toyota Tundra? No, it says I have oh. a Toyota Tundra. Oh, Jack. Yeah. Uh, there is a learning curve on how to tune with a DSP. Lots of info on Audio Frog website as well. Very true. Audio Frog does a... Uh, Andy does a great job at, oh, yeah. at trying oh. to bring down the... Bring it down to a human level. Yeah. Um, and we, we've showed this before, but it always bears repeating. Andy also makes his DSP, his, art, his little handheld... Uh, Microphone? Microphone system yeah. for tuning. <laughs> no, it's an RTA. Yeah. So he makes this set here. It's 200 bucks. You get one. You get his disc, which is honestly worth, it. worth the 200 bucks. 
Um, it sounds incredible, but man, it will rip some speakers up if you're not careful. You know, when we were when Jeff was talking about that girl's voice. Uh, and, Dean. Yes. You're right with the P3 subs. I love the P3s. No, like you say. Tell me he was right about the P3 subs. Um, oh yeah, you were right about the P3 subs. Yeah. Okay. He was right. I was wrong. He was right. Um, and that was a vo the the power the power question we had. He was okay. right. Um, Hello from Virginia. But anyways, Andy sells this on his site. This is this goes on your headrest. There's a cool little microphone that goes in it. It does a lot. It, it, they, you do have to download some software, um, but he gives you a link to the software that you can download. Um, I'll put it in front of my shirt. But this is his version of the mic. You do need a laptop to run this, a Windows-based laptop. Um, and he has a bunch of how-tos on how to use this. And if you're going to buy this, make sure you read his how-tos and don't go out and buy the software. Okay. Because he will... Um, <laughs> what? He will uh, tell you that you wasted your money. So get the free software. Uh, all right. Uh, there's... What? Two hundred dollars just means a mortgage in Australia. Okay, for the Q fifty, for the Q fifty, you can do whatever bucks you means want. Rent payment here, man. It doesn't uh, matter. So, like, okay, yeah, no so he like has a cheap. All right, hang on. Okay, uh, Infinity Q fifty with yes. both system set up. Yeah, uh, which is a three and a half. Yeah. Uh, three, what three year? and a half in the front. Uh, half? He doesn't say okay. what year is that, but so it says. Uh, this is the Q fifty? Isn't that yeah. the big one? Yeah, that's the big one. So it's so, like a that's like a Titan. Kind of, yes. Or the Armada. Yes. Uh, the Armada. Okay, exactly. the Armada. Just the Armada. Exactly. Um, it's got that, the closed system. That's a line level output at the amplifier behind the gas pedal. Yeah, but like if you're going to replace the whole thing, you can do whatever you want. Variable voltage. That's a variable voltage output in that car. And what I mean by that is um, the reason why you need an Amp Pro for most cars is because an Amp Pro is a fixed level 2015. output. 2015. It's a 2015. It, it's a fixed level output. Yeah. That should still be a variable voltage output at the amplifier, meaning you just need RCA. So you can... It's a four channel output out of the radio. You can run that into a DSP, do all your cool stuff and add whatever you want to it. Is that, is that the question? Oh, Robert? that brown, yeah. That's the um, that's the Titan XD that oh. we were talking about. Remember? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, no, Dean, you were right. I was wrong. I'm eating humble pie. Oh, p You get it? p -3s. Yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Why, Why don't, don't you guys sell your audio? So, JL Audio is regional, okay? So in your region, there can only be so many JL dealers. Mm -hmm. In our region, we have two JL dealers. We have mm -hmm. two very good JL dealers. Very close to here. That are very close to our location. Yeah. And they do extremely well with the product. <laughs> mm -hmm. So because of that, we are not a JL dealer. The other thing that I'm holding two, because there's two reasons as well as two dealers. The second reason is JL likes you to be very loyal to JL. Meaning, if you're gonna carry JL, that's your brand. You're gonna go brand centric on JL. We're not that way, okay? We like to carry a lot of brands. So I mean, if you think about it, we have three we like high. <laughs> we have three high-end speaker manufacturer lines. We have Morel, Audison Hertz, and Focal. Yeah. That's crazy. We also have Rockford, Kicker, Kicker Audio Control, uh, Pioneer, Pioneer, Kenwood, Alpine, Alpine, Alpine. Oh Kenwood my Exelon. God. Um, is um, that it? Yeah. And we carry Viper. Um, and then we carry Viper. We carry a lot of stuff. So there, there's, there, we, when, when I, I look at all this stuff, okay, so little Dean philosophy here. Uh, where do you get uh, your info about speaker sizes and info on new cars you haven't worked on? It seems like companies are not keeping, keeping up, up with the info. You're right, Johnny. Yep. And no, hey, Daniel. We, we don't. Um, most of the time, uh, we pull that page out of Ken Ward's book that says I have to test it first uh -huh. because there is no information on a lot of these newer cars. It doesn't exist. Like, like we have great relationships with with Pack, but they're still like I don't know. You know, we we, we don't know either. You know, yep. let us know. So um, you know, if you're in the industry like you are, you know, Educar is a great place, great resource, as well as the uh, install syndic the syndicate mobile. You know, well, yeah, the syndicate. The syndicate. Yeah. Trying to think of what my, you know. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Anyways, I'm on. blowing a fart there. But um, so that's what happens a lot of the times. And that, believe it or not, is a big problem between like Paul over there and us over here. He'll hand us some speakers and we'll be like, bro, what are these? Oh, the computer says fit. this. And it's like, no. Sometimes so, the computer did lie. They, yeah. <laughs> 
carry almost no he JL speakers. Just, yeah, exactly. Just um, abs and abs. <laughs> Fernando go. is French. Um, so, we. Oui. Uh, oh, so a lot of the times what happens, Johnny, is that we'll get a car in, we'll quote out a system, and we'll be like, okay, here's, here's what it might be, and no. Um, and then we'll, we'll also make sure we clarify the fallback. But since you mentioned that, and we're talking about audio control, one of the things about audio control that makes that a little bit easier, and why selling audio control, and I, I was just having this conversation with Chris, one of the things that makes selling audio control a great brand, one, as a consumer to buy, and two, as a retailer to sell, is that it is a Swiss Army knife as far as input goes. So like we were talking about earlier, it has that input so that you can, uh, on the amplifier. So you come in and you're like, hey, I'm gonna, so for example, we're gonna be doing a, uh, an F Infinity here soon. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna be doing a front stage in that car. And in that car, the way it's designed is the front stage is a three and a half and a tweeter on channels one and two, and a mid bass on channels three and four. Okay, so we need a summing device. Well, we only wanna do front stage and subwoofer. That's screaming this amplifier right here because we have channels one and two, three and four input here, and then the subwoofer input will be here. We put this in, we do the EQ, mm -hmm. we set it all up, kick ass. Um, now, what makes these cool is that it has line level input that'll do that, it has RCA input that'll do that, so if we have variable voltage or we're gonna do a amp pro, we can do this. And then, now that they've added AR to the list, if we're doing a 61200 or one of the two DSPs, we can plug an AR into it and we're all set. Mm -hmm. But it, it, they can handle most scenarios that you can throw at them, and that's awesome, that other manufacturers can't. Like that input on these amplifiers, nobody has that yet. And they've had it for almost two years. Yeah. It's like, wow, okay guys. Ooh. Um, so that that's something to think about, and that but yes, you're right. And I was I was gonna go somewhere else before he, he sidetracked me. I don't know where the heck it was. Come on, Tony. Uh, <laughs> uh, can they have? All right, what were, what were we talking about here? Afternoon. What's going What's on? What's that, Robert? The Forza amp was pretty sweet. The Forza amp is coming up. So, yeah. but today we're concentrating on audio control. Um, so, so are, are you bypassing the three speakers in the dash? Um, no, you don't have to bypass the three speakers. You can bypass just. Oh, oh so we were, we were talking about uh, we were talking the about Q50? the Q50. Yes. So that's a variable voltage output underneath uh, at the amplifier. Mm -hmm. So variable voltage means that um, so out of a factory radio into a factory amplifier, there's a couple different scenarios. That's why an amp prone and AR exist. The idea to AR is because some think of it as USB. That's the easiest way to wrap our heads around it. If you have a radio here and you have an amplifier here, if you connect the two with the USB. All right, just like you, there, there's nowhere in that between those USBs that you can grab a signal and put it into an amplifier, okay? Because it's four wires on a USB, you know, or five, you know, four wires in a shield. So there's, there's nothing there. There's all this data talking between the amplifiers. It's just plugged into the radio. So it's like crap. So you need an amp pro that can plug into that and then decipher the code and give you RC outputs that are variable voltage, full range, awesome. Basically what they're doing is they're taking that same signal that they're feeding that factory amplifier and adding you the ability to have that come out of your radio, your factory radio, and it's thus turning your factory radio into a preamped, DACT, D-A-C, output. Yeah. Yay, okay. But if you have, no, 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 it's all good. I was joking. I remember, <laughs> just, I gotta line the things back up. Anyways, so now you have a, Texas. A, a more older type system, what we call variable voltage. And I wanna say older because that was their first style where you have a radio, you have an amplifier. It uses a preamp section, just like an aftermarket would. It's just a wire to wire though. It's not RCAs or anything like that. It's a Molex plug and whatnot. So what that means is I can go in there with my digital multimeter set to AC, play a pink noise track, and as I turn up and down the volume, my, um, my voltmeter goes up and down. I can take that signal and I can put that into this, mm -hmm. all right? And where I'm gonna go is I'm gonna be on my input view, which was right here, and that signal, if I'm playing that pink noise, should look reasonably flat, okay, across here. 
Okay. Now, depending on whether the manufacturer is coloring it at the amplifier or coloring it at the radio, meaning they're EQing it, that's what coloring means, uh, they're coloring the sound, means they're EQing it from the radio or from the amp. Most of those are colored in the amplifier, so you should see a pretty flat signal coming out of that radio. That's awesome, because like I said, RCA into this guy and you're golden. You're not going to use the line level inputs, you're not going to use these, you're actually going to use these and just go directly into the ample into your DSP amplifier and voila, you're golden. Now, what you <coughs> run into is when this is colored, like it's all messed up, which happens, you come down here and, where is it at? Is it, it's not on here? Hey, um, it's not on the house. Hey, what's, what's going, going on, on, man? So, why is it? Normally there is, uh, I'm guessing because, oh, there is, there is, okay, so there is a button that's normally here that's not here because this is just a demo version because we're not plugged in that says auto and it's an auto EQ feature. And what that allows you to do is if you're playing that same pink noise, you hit the auto EQ button and what that's going to do is that's going to DEQ your system for you. And by DEQing, it's going to take that colorization away and try to get it to the audio control house curve. Mm -hmm. And what you'll see when you're over here in the dashboard view is you'll see that input signal that's all messed up and then you'll see your output signal and this EQ will be set and you'll see it look more flat or more in line with what they're trying to get. Now then you can still go in with one of your handheld RTAs and set your appropriate curve that you might want to boost up or gain down or yeah. boost up maybe 3 dB depending on where your gains are at. You can go a little crazy. Yeah. Dean, please discuss the low output of optical systems compared to analog. Adam, please confirm this. <laughs> um, uh, no, uh, we don't make the video for the Alpine Halo 9. We just like... No, we did. We totally did. Which one? Both of them. We have one for the 309 and the 259. No, 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 no. And the, um, he's talking about the expedition that, you, that we no, just No, we didn't make a video for exactly. that. Exactly. But we exactly. have the 359 unboxing review. We have the 259 unboxing review. That was not review. an 150 That was an expedition. That was an expedition. And yeah. we also have us putting the Halo 9 in the Camaro. Yeah. So, and that is in the install uh, from the um, lab. I changed the radio. lab. Yeah. So fiber optic. Fiber optic is another thing that is becoming more and more popular. And basically what you're looking at there, or Toshlink as it's referred, is this input right here. Oh, please. <laughs> I'm what? confused what I'm supposed to do. I know. I'm sorry. I don't mean to confuse anybody. I'm just trying to... No, you know. that was Adam. Oh, yeah. Good. So this, this funky style <laughs> ends right here. This is what's called the Toshlink. Um, fiber connection, and what that does is that's gonna that's that cool little light. You're gonna go ahead and Let's go up a little bit. Uh, hold on, I'm trying to plug it in. All right, got to work with my glasses here. Come on, man. So that plugs in like that, and now you're done. Okay. So if you get like an Amp Pro, an Amp Pro gives you the option to do fiber output. I don't totally Wayne, recommend I know, it. Wayne. Okay. So you can come out and you can do this. The other thing you can do too is if and this is where it's probably more useful. If you have something like the um, uh, Evaluate, this evaluate. has... Evaluate? Uh, what is it called? Elevate. Elevate, Evaluate, evaluate evil 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 If you get the Stinger oh radio God. or you get the GS9, <laughs> okay, these will plug into here. All right, and this is, you're done now. Okay, this is the only connection you need to have between here and here. This is going to give a left and right output so you digital. Got this one to here, so there's no gain at this point, okay, because th you don't need it, it's light. There's, there's no distortion, it's the cleanest signal you can get from here to here. Now I say, why not use it? Well, if you're doing something like this or that, it makes total sense. If you're doing something on a factory stereo and you're not gonna be competing, meaning you're not trying to compete and- uh, Bye, Jason, be, be have fun. Nick Wingate of the world. Um, the one thing it's not gonna do is it doesn't give you four channels of output. And why that's important is if you have, let's say an F-150 and you buy the Amp Pro, you buy the fiber, the Toshlink connection for it, yeah, you can control your volume, it'll go up and down, it'll be great. However, if you have backup sensors in your car and as you're backing up, it's backing up and it's beeping this one over here and it's beeping that one over there, bye. Stuff like that starts to go away. Uh, GS9 isn't variable. Yes, but, the 
Stinger is. The Stinger is variable variable steering wheel. Ha ha. Um, so you don't need a DRC. You can actually control the volume from the uh, Stinger radio. Um, so it's better. Uh, so there you go. I personally live off. <laughs> this okay. is awesome. What are your requirements for you to come here and set up my my system? I'm, I'm a great, great cook. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, okay. What was that? What was that one that was right below that? Uh, which one? Uh, uh, it was like it said. Um, which one? Uh, well, the date DSP is great if you are using an aftermarket deck. Yeah, yeah, it is. It is. Um, I'm so conf I don't remember where it went. That looks. That Sony. No, the Sony is awesome. Sony looks nice. So optical bad, analog better. It's not bad or better or worse or it's none of that. It's just a case per case how you're planning on using it. Okay, mm -hmm. that's all it is. Um, we did an F-150. What at some point you guys are gonna see the video where we took the. Um, we started out that way. We actually started out going fiber optic out of the uh, Nav TV Zen 9 mm -hmm. into the 810, and we ended up pulling all the fiber out and putting, which was one cable, mm -hmm. uh, and putting all RCA ins because it just wasn't doing all the lane departure and the, the, the sides and the, 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 the stuff happens everywhere. So from that perspective, it just wasn't working to the customer's expectations. He liked it where it was supposed to be from the factory. So now, the other thing you can do is let's say you get a handheld device that has a, an optical output, which there is such a thing. You know, that's another option you, you can know. do. You know? <laughs> you know? Okay. Mm -hmm. Ah, I just pulled yeah, it, Chris. All right. Uh, aren't those shirts usually for Facebook, Facebook shows? No, it's for daily shows. This is the only shirt we have. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> I bought all these for us to wear so yeah. we didn't have to wear brand names we and got, then get all get pissy more, with man. us. What? More what? More shirts. Like different shirts. We look like Can I pay for these now. first? Oh my god. <laughs> Does optical have less chance of alternator wine? Yes. But there again, you're gonna have to go analog at some point. So, you know, if you're going if, remember ah. this is just the input. So if it's if you have alternator wine on your input, yeah, it's gone. But if you have alternator wine on your output, it's still there. Yeah. Uh, if you're going to do a bit system where you're going to go full DA all the way, well then yeah, you're going to be, you know, then you don't have anything to worry about. Now what I mean by that is Audison makes the cards so that you can pull out the different inputs on the amplifier so you can go out of, their, out of the source unit into the bit, out of the bit into the amplifier and it's full Tosh link the whole nine yards and you're all good to go. Johnny. I'll see you in Dallas, man. We'll talk <laughs> soon. I don't know. I'll bring your shirt to Dallas. Yeah. Um, I'm tapped out right now. Tapped out. I just, uh, I just had to put a new no. roof in a driveway on people. I'm, I'm spent. <laughs> and pay taxes. And pay, oh yeah, yeah. Was, I, I was like, there was a third one. Pay taxes. Yeah, that's right. I know. How um, did you forget that? Oh my. I, I've, Dude. I've put my tax thing out of uh, my. No. Uh, I know. I, I don't think it's yes. going to be a San Nine installation. No. I no, you're so. never going to see that get no, installed. No. That's, that's not even going to happen. Um, Optical cables need to be, to be run very carefully. Cannot kink. Very true. Um, like they come bun yeah, because it is fiber, so it's it's you, you're not gonna pull this tight and zip tight like you would a, uh, a like a microphone yeah. or no USB. So no, no, no. funny story about yeah. these. Yeah. Um, yeah. So if you're if if you've ever worked on a Mercedes Benz <laughs> or you know a friend that has Mercedes Benz, Mercedes Benz has been using this type of connection for years and years and years and years and years. Now what Mercedes Benz does is they cover all of their fiber connections in orange. They're all orange, so you can't miss them. And they use a very rigid cable, so it's like they don't bend this well. Like their cables, they would never do this. They are straight up like this is the most you're gonna bend those things. They are hard plastic. Yeah. <sighs> so what happens is, is you get these guys that don't know what the hell they're doing in one of these cars, and they start probing them thinking that there's, there's like voltage in them or signals or you know, they think it's a Chevy and it's got constant 12 volts in it or some silliness like that but I can't tell you how many times I've had guys come in with Mercedes and, and whatnot and they've had their cables either cut off or holes poked in them from <laughs> or stripped back from these goofballs trying to to figure out what the hell's going on with it and it's like it's a fiber optic cable also in the Mercedes Benz is if you have a yellow tube about eight gauge looking size, maybe, know little, that. maybe ten gauge. Those are airlines. Nah. I love it when people poke holes in those. It's the greatest thing ever. Just grab a T top. They Boom. just 
<laughs> it's like, what are you thinking? What up, Victor? It, yeah, so, or just crimp, yeah, crimp right into the road. Yeah, yeah put right a key tap right onto it. So, uh, that's that. Okay. What's in Dallas? In Dallas, it's a huge, huge uh, show for the industry. Knowledge Fest. Knowledge Fest. So, we've talked, uh, we just did Knowledge Fest Indiana two months ago, mm -hmm. and we did the big show. We're on the floor. Uh, if you want to get an idea of what, if you're in, in the industry, you can uh, stay away from those tubes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah, and don't touch, don't ever try to unclip them because it's like, poof. Anyway, yeah. Um, so, so Knowledge Fest is a is our as an industry's um, convention. They do it three times a year. Mm -hmm. Next year is going to be four times a year. And so what it is <laughs> is if we it's it's three days of intense learning and getting an opportunity to talk with all these manufacturers. We go. Uh, we sit in classes. We get to uh, social. We get to talk to people like Ada. Talk to Ada. Uh, thanks to Johnny. Um, uh, yeah, and we get to meet and talk because a lot of the times the only time we get to converse with these guys mm -hmm. is on the internet. So we get to meet face to face, we get to exchange ideas, we get to pat each other on the back and say, hey man, thanks for that information you gave me, let me buy you a drink. I never do that, I don't drink. Um, but a lot of people do. Yeah. Uh, but the trainings there are phenomenal. Like when we talk about Andy from Audio yeah. Frog. He's an awesome guy. I got to meet him there. We've sat in his trainings countless times. We've got to interview him. Ada is an um, awesome guy. We get, to, we get to have, it gives us the ability to meet a lot of these people. And for us, it's great because when we get to meet these people, it allows us to introduce these people to you mm -hmm. uh, and have them, when they support us, then we can show you and we can talk to you about stuff yeah. like this. Because as you guys know, this stuff is expensive. Um, so, you know, we have to, in order to make it so that you guys can see this stuff, we need support from them, um, sometimes. So, yeah, that's, that's, but Knowledge Fest allows all the dealers, anyone that wants to go that's in the industry, to go, sparkling cider, mm, yeah, I hate bubbles, that make me fart, um, to go and learn, learn DSP, learn how to sell, learn how to talk to customers, mm -hmm. learn how to, to uh, build boxes, learn how to use a router, learn how to do 3D printing. All those things that we need to know as a, uh, to service you, the consumer, better, mm -hmm. or if you're a dealer, to service your consumer better, um, we go and we do that. Correct. Um, Dallas is the big one. So we'll be talking more about Dallas because Dallas is also where they do the industry awards. You may on Instagram or Facebook see someone where they put top 12 installer or top 12 retailer. That is one of the things that gets done in Dallas is where we get to be topped. And so there's a whole video you have to make and you have they to make a red carpet, and you have to do all this craziness. You know, pictures, and they keep telling me that no, you should not. go, you should do that. I'm like, I, yeah. I don't know. It's the whole making the video thing. I don't know if I can do that. Uh, um, really? Yeah. Huh. So it's kind of weird for you. Um, huh? All right. Uh, yes. Uh, I, I personally actually uh, went one of the Ricardo uh, class. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and Indy, and that was awesome. Yeah, because that, that was, was awesome. with that awesome. was with Andy and Andy Ricardo. And Ricardo. <laughs> yes. So that um, was it's, it's an awesome guy. Uh, yes, we mentioned the awards. Yeah. Um, so that's that. All trusted right. Tech. There you trusted go. Tech. Right there. No, that's not me. That's you. Ada, right Ada was trusted tech. Um, it's Shaughnessy. So, anyways, that brings us to the end of the show today. Uh, we hope you guys learned something about DSP. Um, if not, we'll, we'll do more next week. Yeah. So next week we'll have another DSP up. We're going to talk about more of that. There again, uh, whether you go back and watch the kicker one, you go and you watch this one, it doesn't matter. You can download this stuff. You can play with it. You can get an idea of what this thing is supposed to be doing. <laughs> this what, is what, awesome. What, what? Like Johnny <laughs> saying, <laughs> so it's not going to make a lot, and then you bounce it in the <laughs> <laughs> yeah, why not? If you guys uh, don't know, I, I do a second YouTube channel called The Boring Life of Dean and Haley. That's where you get to see the private life of Dean, uh, Dean, me, and Haley, and some of the silliness we do as a father-daughter team facing the world and going out with the one day off that we have and just taking on the challenges that it is to be a dad with a child, in this case a daughter. Um, <clears throat> yeah. If you guys, uh, if, you, if you're into that kind of thing, by all means, check it out. Subscribe to the channel. Uh, if you have questions, Haley answers all the questions on that. It's a wonderful thing. Uh, you get to learn more about me. Yay. Uh, <laughs> so it's a lot of fun. It, it is a lot of fun. Yeah, it is. Uh, it's called The Boring Life because for the most part, we think of our lives as boring, but sometimes they're not. 
Uh, and that's that. Uh, Endgame Boring Life is, we're, we're going to be filming that Sunday. Nice, nice. So for, uh, we do movie reviews. Thanks, Johnny. It's just all that fun stuff that happens. All right, guys, so that's it. This is one hour. That's the uh, show, guys. DNF Tool Thank you, tool Ada. Yeah. Thank you, Johnny. DNF Tool Drawers is a place you can find all the cool tools we use. By all means, check them out. Get that cool red pry bar. That thing is awesome. Um, you can also find the, I think we have the eye test mic listed on there. Anyways, yeah. a lot of neat stuff there just to check out. We are going to be updating that soon uh, because we want to add a resources page if I can just find some free time to do that. Um, Patreon is a place you can go to support the show. Like I said at the beginning of the show, there will be a podcast up this weekend. It's it's all set and ready to go. I just got to turn it on and make it active. So, yay there. We filmed another one this week, so that was awesome. Yeah. We also filmed a couple more videos this week. Um, five stars. Yeah, give me this one. If you guys want the free stickers, just go here, do this, give me your home address, and I'll send you three stickers. doesn't cost you anything. If you want to be a uh, part of the Patreon guys to support the show, you can go to the patreon.com, five star car stereo. And of course, the shirt that we're wearing right now, if you want to own that or any one of the 10 other shirts that we make, teespring slash store slash five star. All right, guys, it's Saturday night. It's time to get freaky. You guys have a good, safe weekend. Don't do anything stupid. If you're going to get hammered or high or whatever the heck it is you do, Uber, Lyft, and call a friend that isn't. And you mm -hmm. guys will have a good, safe time, which means you can join us again on Monday where we get to talk more car audio on Facebook. And don't forget, on the 20th, we're going to have Chris Bennett from Audio Control, and it's going to be a lot of fun. I'll take this. You go yep. talk to him. And uh, it's going to be fun because we're going to have some fun new audio control stuff to talk about, I'm told. It's a possibility. Hey? All right. You guys be good. We'll see you next week. Bye.